invited Christ into my heart and in my life. And I got to thinking about the mountaintops, experiences that I've been in. And I also started, I also remembered some of the deepest valleys that I've ever encountered in my whole life. And faced with different choices, whether to give up and throw the towel in and be a loser or go God's way. Thank God, hallelujah, that God gives us the strength to keep on going and keep pursuing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now look at me. Bless the Lord. I won't keep you long this morning. Hallelujah. But wherever God's going to take this message, only the Holy Spirit knows. I leave it up to Him. Hallelujah. But I want what the Holy Spirit wants for this house in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Every one of us probably in here, we can look back on our Christian life. Some have just entered into this race. And some might not understand some of the trials and testings that we go to. But God allows such things to take place, hear me, to perfect our faith in Him. I've discovered over the many years, hear me, what faith is all about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hear me. Too many times in my life, I walked by my feelings thinking I was walking by my faith or by faith. And understand me, child of God, those feelings will dissipate very quickly. Are you hearing me? Feelings has nothing to do with your relationship with the Lord. Satan likes to deal with the feelings of Christians. I say this, get out of the feeling realm, because if you stay in the feeling realm, you'll find yourself in a ditch, you'll find yourself defeated constantly and continuously. You'll find your joy being depleted, you'll find your peace being depleted, you'll find your rest being depleted. I say, look at me, walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, folk. You know what I'm talking about. Because your feeler, hear me, your sight, your smell, your hearing, will tell you just the opposite of what the Word of God declares. We'll do one of the two things. We'll either believe the report of man or we'll believe the report of the Lord God Almighty. I say, whose report will you believe? I believe the report of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've discovered over the years, hear me, of ministry, over the years, hear me, God has taken me to the mountaintops and he has taken me to the lowest valleys. But taken me, yes, he has. And one thing I can truthfully say as I stand before you this morning, hear me, he has never forsaken me, not one time. Maybe I have forsaken him. Maybe I have walked away from his word. Maybe I have went by my feelings, hear me, and found my myself in a rut and in a ditch but God was always there to pick me up and lift me up to his level in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and can I tell you something there might be some in here this morning that you might be lower than a snake's belly proverbially speaking this morning hear me child of God God doesn't God hasn't ordained you to eat the dust of this ground he ordained Satan to eat the dust of this ground. Hallelujah. God's fixing to pick you up and put you on solid ground in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but those are words of encouragement. Now you hear me. Sometimes we make wrong choices in life. And those choices, we suffer the consequences of it. I've made wrong choices in my life and destroyed some of the spiritual walk that I had with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? That doesn't mean that God kicks you out of his army. 
That means I've made a mistake. God, I'm coming back in Jesus' name. But the devil would tell you by your feeling realm, God's forsaken you. God don't love you anymore. What's the use of even going to church? What's the use of even serving God? It's too hard. Look at me. Yes, it is too hard if you're trying to live it, but it's an easy path. Hear me, child of God, if we allow the Holy Spirit to live its life in and through us. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. I've taken a lot of blows. You have taken a lot of blows. A lot of shots over the years have been... Christians, look at me. The sails might have been torn. The ship might have been, been rocked and teetered back and forth. Hear me. But the anchor still holds in the midst of the storm in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Jesus gave the example. Hear me. He given an example of of. of Men building their house on sand and men building their house on a rock. And he said the storms of life came to both houses. Look at me. Storms will come our way as being Christians. Don't be so gullible that everything's going to go smooth and everything's going to be smooth sailing since you become a Christian with the, and come into relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May I submit to you, all hell will break loose on you. And if we're trying to live this in the feeling realm, hear me, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You've got to take this walk by faith. And as I said, as I was walking down that creek, and just me and the Lord, I started, it was like a picture screen. Started going back through some of the things that I've encountered as being a Christian. I remember back years ago, hallelujah, that I backslid in the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know what backsliding means? Some people are backslidden, don't even know they're backslidden. If you're not going forward, look at me, you're going backward. I was backslidden. Hear me. I let things of this world get in, creep in subtly. Things like fishing, things like hunting, things like taking my dog's coon hunting. Not only was those things destroying me spiritually, they was destroying my relationship that I had with my wife. I'd rather been with dogs than with my wife. I'm not afraid to admit that. Hear me. Folk, understand me. The devil was on my case. Hear me. He was on my tracks. And I remember very plainly one night when I was out in the woods, hear me, uh, coon hunting, and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, it's either coon hunting or me, one of the two. What are you going to do? I said, God, I'll give it up. How many know some things we got to give up? we got to lay at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they become idols to us and we find more satisfaction in those things than what we do in our relationship with the Lord and God says I'll not take second best I'll not be a God that sits on the back burner while you entertain your flesh and I fell away from the things of the Lord God Almighty hear me I quit coming to church I quit reading the word of God I quit seeking the face of God But you know what? The hound of heaven was constantly after me. He never gave up on me. Aren't you glad he'll never give up on you? I said, aren't you glad he'll never give up on you? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. We come to a, a, an, an area of our life, my wife and I, we come to an area where we're going to separate, where we're going to divorce. She got herself saved. I was unsaved. And I made it miserable on her life. 
And I said, it's either your God or I'm out of here. I'm, going, I'm, I'm leaving. And she said, see you later. I knew she had something that was real. I give my heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? Don't sell out, child of God. Amen. Don't compromise the convictions that God has laid in your heart. Hallelujah. Why? Because souls are at stake. Your family's at stake. It's more than just you. It's your whole family. It's your workers that you work around, that you have told them about the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Thank God. I come to an area of my life and I said, God, I'm miserable in the life that I'm living. The partying, the drinking, the, and, and the smoking, the, the drugs. What I, I, I'm tired of this type of life. There's got to be more to living than what I'm experiencing right now. My marriage is on the rocks. And I dropped to my knees and invited Christ into my heart and into my life, and God put our marriage on a solid rock. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just telling you a few things that I've been through, hear me, as being a Christian, and that's, I've been a Christian over 30-some years. Close to, yeah, 40, I was going to say close to 40. I mean, no, that's a long time. 40 years of experience Forty years of trials and testings. And can I tell you something? I still have trials and testings yet to this day. And we'll always have trials and testings until we go on home with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God called me into ministry not too long after I become a Christian. Are you hearing me? Worked a secular job for 24 years at Fruhoff. I remember sitting out in the parking lot listening to R.W. Schambach every morning. And I said, God, I'd love to be in full-time ministry. I'd love to be in full-time ministry. Well, my season time came. There come a time I had to make a choice. The Lord said, this will be the last year that you will, you'll work a secular job. I'm going to put you in full-time ministry. It took a big step of faith. To take my babies, hear me, where I had sufficient funds and support for 24 years to take them out to a town called Scott, Ohio and, and have a church of about 12 people to minister to. Hear me. It wasn't easy, believe me. It was not a bed of roses uh, some things we struggled, some things, you know, uh, the ravens would come in and thank God for the ravens. Can somebody say amen? amen? I said, thank God for the ravens. Bless the Lord. God would supply. There would be a ram in a thicket caught somewhere. He's Jehovah Jireh and he's still Jehovah Jireh. Somebody say amen. amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. But the Lord says, you idiot, or the devil said, you idiot, you give up a, a, a full-time position 24 years for this? I mean, no, when you listen to the devil long enough, you'll start believing a lie. And besides that, I'd have put up with a lot of religious spirits, fighting religious spirits, trying to grow a church and allow the Lord to move and, 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 and uh, just let a Holy Ghost explosion take place. We would get people saved and people would run them out of the church. Get people saved and people would run them out of the church. You know what? I went like this and I said, I give up. This is crazy. There's not snot on that. I said, God, why in the world would you ever place me in such a place? I'm trying to get people saved and they're putting them out of the church as fast as I can get them saved, get them to lead them to the Lord. Hear me. So disappointed. Anybody ever been disappointed? I think I might be talking to a few this morning. I can feel that. Hear me. I can sympathize with you. I've been there. I've been in the valley of discouragement. I've faced the valley of Baca. Hallelujah, the valley of tears. I've been there, done that, and it's not fun. 
But can I tell you something? All along, God was teaching me and training me, hallelujah, praise God, to be more like Him and rely totally and completely upon Him no matter what I see, no matter what I feel. Hear me. Every Sunday, understand, working a full-time job every Sunday morning, Sunday night preaching three services a week. My wife packing up two, what was it, two or three we had then? Four? Four kids, two of them on each hip, getting them ready for church. We were the first ones in the church because we had Sunday school back then. It started, what, 8.30, 9.30? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, working a, a, a twenty-four or working a, a secular job, eight hours a day. How I many know that takes a toll on you? And besides that, all the the pressure that was coming from the people, the people having problems and different things, and wanting more of you to to uh, 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 counsel them. And I thought. And is this what ministry is all about? I've got enough problems myself. And how many know the devil in times like that, pressures and squeezings, he tries to get you discouraged and tries to get you to throw in the towel. But the Lord God's word says, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, that after you've done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Don't throw the towel in until the conclusion. And I already know the conclusion. You win as long as you stay there. Look at me. The weakest Christian is stronger than the devil. Understand something, folk. The devil would like to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his characteristics. But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life. And they might have it more abundantly. I'll preach the message maybe tonight. What I was going to preach this morning. But I really don't feel led to go that direction. Because I believe this is needful this morning. Hallelujah. And as I was walking down there. I was reviewing back over my past walks with the Lord Jesus. And all those things when God put us into full time ministry. I remember, man, I'm telling you, uh, trying to find clothes for the kids, going to garage sales, and just try to make ends meet. Thank God for the inheritance that my wife got through her daddy. We got through the first couple of years. Hear me. We didn't live in luxury. No way, shape, or form. But God was forming me and shaping me all the time. Understand something. Not too far along down in that, those areas, hear me, child of God. Uh, we face different complications that come our direction. Hear me, with church people, church folk, whatever. I'm going to know some of your worst trials can come from your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. Not from the world, but from the church world. To see people get up and leave and look like a, a mass exodus in an instant's time. This family leave, that family leave, this family leave, and never give you a report why they left. How many know that really makes you feel good as a pastor? Hello? Your heart sinks and you think, what's the use? Is anybody getting anything? Hear me. There's times you feel so discouraged. Am I talking to anybody in here? You just feel like backpedaling. It seems like when you take 10 steps forward, it seems like 20 steps go backward. And you say, God, where in the world are you at in all this? And the Lord just says, trust me. Just trust me. How many know... It's hard to stand still in those times. What a song. Stand still. 
it's hard to stand still because you want to see something. Can I tell you something? If the Holy Spirit don't do it, man cannot possibly do it in the name of the Lord. If the Holy Spirit can't stir our hearts, listen, no man's program is going to stir the heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Then come one of the greatest devastations of my whole ministry is when my dad shot my brother. Hear me. Understand something, folk. That was a test beyond test. Thank God that Tracy's dad, bless the Lord, Tracy's still serving God and glorifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. By all rights, we ought to be all bouncing off of a rubber room someplace filled up with drugs. Hear me. My dad shot my brother. I don't know, it's because of Alzheimer's or whatever. I don't know. I just, I've never got an answer from the Lord. And the devil said, your ministry is going down. Your ministry is going down. Your ministry is going down. And I remember standing with the lawyer up in Van Wert, and the lawyer said, well, what are your church people going to think about you? I said, I pray they love me through it. I said, I pray they love me through it. Great devastation, folk. I want to tell you something. As being a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching, hear me, hallelujah, that God shields us, God protects us, and some of the things that was coming up in my mind, God, where is your protection? I see that he'd give your angels charge over you. Where was your protection? I mean, no bitterness started creeping up, creeping up on the inside of me. I've been through some valleys, folk. Some areas that really tested the family and the family core, and I still believe it affects the family yet to this day. Hear me. How many's ever wept in here that you wept so much that you couldn't weep anymore? Your, your guts, pardon the, the expression, but your guts just feel like it was coming out of you. Now understand something. My dad attended the church and my brother attended the, say, the church. Hear me. These things were not supposed to happen. They're supposed to happen to maybe other people, but not God's people. Hello. Such devastation. And the lawyer says, you might as well give up on your church because... It's gone down the tubes. I, I mean, no, those are really, really words of encouragement. When you're looking, or discouragement, when you're looking for words of encouragement, it was like he threw a, a, an anchor to a drowning man and said, there, survive. What am I saying? I'm saying this. It's no bit of roses to serve God if you're looking for a bed of roses hear me you're in the wrong army some of you have been through things that I've never experienced before but I don't know how in the world you've ever sustained going through those things but God sustained you somehow and some way thank God that you're still here thank God you're still praising God thank God you're still glorifying him as king of kings and Lord of Lords. Yes. Hallelujah. My dad's mind was so deranged at the time. Hear me. So deranged at the time. I think if I went in that house right afterwards, he'd have probably shot me. That's the way he was. Hear me. I never taught I've never talked on these things openly. But I feel we must talk about these things openly so that people get an understanding of the flames and the fires that God brings you through. Hallelujah. And to pray out and cry out to God and say, God, where were you in all of this? How many know bitter feelings can come up against God? Can somebody say he's a good God? I couldn't say that back then. 
You know why? Because the devil was on my case and wanted me to throw the towel in on ministry. But can I tell you something? Thank God for the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that saw us through and sustained us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll keep sustaining us until we go on home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you explain to your young daughters when they're asking you, Dad, why did this take place? And you have no answer. You have no answer. All you can do is just cry. I know what the Valley of Baca is, the Valley of Tears. Been there, done that. Hear me. But God saw me through the flames and through the fires. But there was a choice that I had to make. The Lord said, you'll either get better or you'll get bitter. That's the words that he gave to me and I'll never forget it. The choice belongs to you, son. Thank God the Holy Spirit persuaded me to make the right choice to go with God no matter what I saw, no matter what I heard, no matter what it looked like against the consequences, against the Word of God. I still believed the Lord and I knew there was something supernaturally holding me up and sustaining me. And he said, get up and pursue. For surely I'll be with you. One of the great, greatest devastations of the blow of, of the supernatural world striking at the heart of an individual that loves Jesus. Folk, if I'd have thrown the towel in back then, chances are many would never come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some that I look at in here. But God knows all along. That's why I say, don't give up. And some would think, well, man, after that type of devastation and, and what have you, uh, you know, surely now, you know, it's been smooth riding. Uh -uh. Nope. There was another giant to face. Another difficult circumstance to face. Hear me. Understand me, folk. Hallelujah. At that time, my children rebelled and went out into the world. They were young kids, teenagers. Thank God they get over the teen years. And I feel for moms and dads that got teenagers. Hear me. But they, they fell away from the things of the Lord and the devil was speaking to my heart at that time and saying, if you can't take care of your own family, how can you take care of the family of God? How I many know the devil knows the Bible? And boy, can he use the word on you to condemn you. Hear me. And man, there was times, you know, my daughters would, of course, they was at the age where they could do what they wanted to do at 18 and what have you. And I told him, if you're 18 and you're living under my roof, you're going to do what I say. And I had rules. And those rules went by the word of God. And, of course, they wanted to sow some of their wild oats. And I'm not trying here to embarrass my kids, but that was a trial to me. That's where I lost my hair. <laughs> and Kristen was right in on it. <laughs> I remember my daughter, we went, uh, we went camping down St. Mary's and somebody, somebody gave me a word and said that while you guys are here, there's a party going on at your house. I said, what? He said, there's a party, drinking party going on at your house. Hear me, I'm the preacher. I told my wife, get in the car, we're heading out of here. And buddy, I'm telling you, the smoke was pouring. And I come into my house, hear me, with nobody there at that time, and I said, I'm parking my car around the back of the barn so they can't see my car, and I'm waiting for them. 
and I waited there. And all of a sudden, here comes my daughter Amber in with her boyfriend, Joe. I forget what his name is. And I'm telling you what, look at me. Look at me. I kind of stepped out of sanctification. Because when I went to that car and that boy rolled that window down, his eyes were all bloodshot and he, he, didn't know, uh, he didn't know one and one. And I looked him right square in the eyes and I said, you know what, I'd take you out if I could. And I was. I was at the point where I was ready to drill him right between the eyes and believe me, I would have done it if it wouldn't have been for the Holy Spirit because I was so protective over my children. I don't want to see none of my children go to hell. Are you hearing me? And moms and dads, we've got to be protective over our kids. Are you hearing me? Lest they get caught into a trap. But these are some of the things that I've, been, I've faced as being a Christian. I'm telling you, listen, hallelujah, no matter how deep the valley, God's still there. And these kids was driving me nuts. I was running after them. I remember Kristen and Amber and them, they'd drive around. I'd chase them in the middle of the night. Down the back roads. You mean tell me you really did, Pastor Mark? Exactly. I said, man, I've got to get them away from Kristen. She's a, she's a bad influence on me. <laughs> I was listening to ungodless music that Kristen was bringing in. And I, and, uh, I said, if I find any music, I find any music. If I find any music in this car, I'm paying for the insurance, I'm paying for the car. I find any ungodless music in this car, I'm busting it up. And you won't have the car any longer. Guess what? I found it. And I busted it up. It wasn't my girls, it was Kristen's. <laughs> goody, 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 goody. <laughs> He never promised a victory without battle. Boy, that's why that song, Enoch, it touched my heart, man, I'm telling you. That's why I want to just sing it over and over because I know there's still more victories to gain. I know there's still more valleys that we've got to go through till we reach that heavenly kingdom. But you know what? Like the Apostle, uh, the apostle Paul, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Abraham said, he was fully persuaded that God was well able to provide. Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor power, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things past shall ever separate you from the love of God, which we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bless the Lord. And I remember my wife telling me this. She said, you know what? You're going to drive yourself nuts. Chasing these girls around. And I said, I'm just about there now. I'm trying to take care of a church and trying to keep my kids under control, and I just can't do it. I can't do it. And my wife said, well, when they was children, we dedicated them to the Lord. And when the pressures of hell comes against them, God will sustain them. We need to just let, let them over into the Lord's hands. And you know what? That was the greatest burden off of my back. I said, God, they're not my kids. They're your kids. I've raised them to the best of my knowledge. And this is what I get. <laughs> what an easy... And still maintain the joy and the love... Hear me, of the Lord? How I many know you can't do that in your own power, in your own strength? It's got to be something supernatural sustaining you. And I did, but I prayed for them constantly and continuously, day in and day out. My wife would pray, we would pray. God, get a hold of their hearts. I, I, I don't want anything drastic to happen because how I many know you can step out of this life just like that? I said, I don't want none of my kids to go to hell, Lord. The turning point came when Amber had a wreck. She was dropped Joe and went with Seth. <laughs> Seth come on the scene. 
And she was going down the road. Of, what is that road that you live on, Seth? What is it? 107. Going down the road. And I don't know what she did. She was doing something with her radio or whatever. And went across. And how many know down 107? I mean, the ditches are. She went across the road doing fiddling with her CDs or listening to her music. And went across and then oversteered to get back and went completely off and over into the ditch, flipped over in the ditch and slid down the ditch. And thank God that that car stopped because just down along the line there was nothing but a big, uh, cement abutment down there. And I remember the words of Amber. Amber said she had to crawl out of her car and crawled up on the edge of the creek bank, blood cr- streaming down her face, Ankle all busted up and twisted up. She said, Dad, I thought I was dying. And she said, I knew that I was backslidden. I knew I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. She said, people would come by and look at me and never stop. Just sat there, looked at me, kept on going. And some old man come over and said, honey, we'll get help to you. I can't come over and help you, but we'll get help to you. But that was a turning point in the whole family. And they come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I remember Mandy saying very, very, very plainly to me, Dad, when I have kids, I never raise them the way that you raised me. You're too strict. Guess what? I see her raised and her kids the very same way and that's the Bible way in the name of Jesus can I tell you something moms, dads that have teenagers hear me some of these things run in their hearts and in their lives thank God if you don't have one that does that amen what a blessing but understand me hallelujah don't you give up and don't you shut up you keep living your life for the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, because God will see you through the fire again. He'll see you through the flames again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. We encountered all these things started running through me going down that creek. And then not too long ago, several years back, where I couldn't sleep at night and went through a, a horrible state in my life. And man, you know, it was, it's a, it was affecting my ministry, uh, affecting me, affecting my whole family. And I say, God, why is all this happening? How many know the devil don't like you? But God permits certain things to take place so that we are dependent solely upon him and him alone alone. Sometimes he'll put your back against a wall where there's no place to go except to believe the Lord Jesus Christ and only him. Hallelujah. And then you think, praise God, everything's fine, everything's hunky-dory. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You start shouting victory. And then all of a sudden, something else takes place. The song and the dance dwindles down. Folk, welcome to the family of God. Because you know what you are? You're a fish swimming upstream against the tides of this world. Any dead fish can float downstream. Look at me. Go by the way of the world. But when you're called, hear me, by God Almighty, look at me, you're you're going against the stream of this world's standards. And this world's standards is an antichrist standard. You realize and recognize that we are in a real spiritual warfare. Look at me. And our souls are at stake. You see, the devil don't play tinker toys. 
His characteristic, as I said, he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And hear me. But I thank God that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. There's been positions that you place in, you say, God, I can't go no further. I'm I'm as far as what I can go, I can't go no further. And the Lord says, I know, I got you right where I want you. You lean not to your own understanding, but now you trust in me with your whole heart. Hear me. Why in the world are we having all this wacky weather? Why is it always on Sunday that's going to snow and have snowstorms? Amen. Why is it? God has ordained for those to be here that are here. Amen. Don't worry about the others. Hallelujah. Where two are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Somebody say amen. amen. Hear me, folk. The Apostle Paul said this just before he got his head cut off by Nero. He said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. I've been beaten with rods thrice. He said, I've been shipwrecked. I've been perils of the deep, perils in my own countrymen. I've been through all these things. And in the end, he said this, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror. You know why? Because Christ was with him. And can I tell you something? Christ is with you in your crisis. Can I say it again? I said Christ is with you in your crisis, even though you might not feel it, even though you might not sense it, hear me, even though you might not see it, even though you might not hear it, God is in the midst of the crisis with you. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego went through the flames, but the fourth man was with them in the name of the Lord. And can I tell you something? The fire didn't burn the boys. Why? Because the fourth man was in the furnace with them. And can I tell you something? The fourth man is with you as well in the name of the Lord. Look at me. We're going through in the name of Jesus. I just double dog dare you to say that. I'm going through in the name of the Lord. I'm not looking at the circumstance. I'm not looking at the situation. But I'm looking at the conclusion of the matter. Somehow God's going to bring me out of this wilderness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God pours out His Spirit in seasons on His church. There are seasons of refreshings and revival. You know why they're there? To get us through another valley. And then God will pour out His season upon us again he'll take us through the flames and through the fires I believe it was Isaiah said this he said we went through through uh, water and the waters didn't overtake us we went through rivers and the rivers didn't drown us we went through fire and the fire didn't burn us hallelujah why because God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God? Hallelujah. I trust I'm helping somebody this morning. Understand me. I don't care if you watch some TV evangelist on television saying, oh, you never have no problem, blah, 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 blah. You know, don't just put your trust in the Lord. Well, that's the truth. You do put your trust in the Lord. But I want to tell you something. From the promise that God gives you, there's a from point A to point B, you've got a valley. And when you go to through that valley, look at me. The outcome in point B is the reception of the promise. I, I promise you. He said, "I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I won't abandon you in such dire circumstances." 
Hallelujah, for I am the Lord, your God, that walks with you. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For the Lord my God is with me. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why David said, Let not your hands hang down. Lift up holy hands without wrath or without dissension and praise the name of your God in the middle of your flaming fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I challenge, and not I, but I believe the Spirit of the Lord challenges this body of believers. Hear me. In the middle of your crisis, Christ is there. Maybe you don't sense it. Maybe you don't feel it. But he challenges us to praise him and glorify him and keep pursuing him no matter what in Jesus' name. The feelings won't be there sometimes. Hear me. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, most of the time they won't be there. Look at me. It's not the feelings that we go by. We go by and trust God by what his word declares in the name of Jesus. Some are, are believing for their families, for their families to get saved. I'm believing for them to get saved myself. Hear me. But sometimes when you look at them, you say, I don't think God's ever going to answer that prayer. I thought he was going to do it. But I just give up. Don't give up. That's what the devil wants you to do. Don't give up. Keep pursuing. Keep praying. Keep interceding. Keep binding in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because God's given us the victory again and again and again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let me ask this question. Who else has words of eternal salvation? Nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody but the Lord. Hallelujah. Folk, he never promised us a bed of roses. Enoch, why don't you come back up? I want you to sing it one more time. Bless the Lord. Why? Because this song ministers to me and it ministers a lot of people that's been through the flames and through the fires. And I promise you I'm going to... 20 after... Well, I, didn't th- I thought it was about 11.30. Because I know people get mad at me if I go over time. They'll leave the church. Seriously. I'm serious. But you know what? That's all right. We'll keep on pursuing. If you can stay at a ball game or an overtime, you can stand in church for 15 minutes later. Hello. Bless God. Hallelujah. I do know this one thing, folk. God's got good things in store for this church in this year. I seriously, seriously believe that in the name of the Lord. And God's going to give us the breakthrough that we need in this church. And this church will abound with blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So take heart, take courage. Some, I know that you're going through the valleys right now. Some are facing flames and, and different, difficult circumstances. Hear me. But God will see you through. Why don't you just tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I think he's telling the truth. I just think I might choose God. I'm going the way of the Lord. And not by the way I feel in Jesus' name. Enoch, sing it one more time, brother.